part of the cold medicine? Oh no, that's production! Hello and welcome again. Um, I am Hobo Tom. As the WWE would like you like like to call me either Hobo or Tom. Because they're doing some weird stuff there in WWE, especially on SmackDown. First, I'd like to apologize to all the fans out there. Um, I went up to see the two shows last week. One at Orlando, which is Monday Night Raw, which again, you can actually see live videos from my channel. And then I went up to Jacksonville to watch SmackDown, again with Twisted Pixie, to make a video game avatar of her. What do they call them? Avatars, I guess? They call them characters. Make a twisted character. That's going to be darn cool. Um, the thing is, I went up to Jacksonville, though. And just like SoCal Uncensored, this t-shirt says it all. So I was pretty busy. Um, I could not get to the New Year's Dash. I was exhausted from all the wrestling. And now I missed another show. No, I did the Impact. Oh, it was uh, the, the, U, the UK TakeOver. I started to get some nasty head cold. Again, my allergies return when I go up to Jacksonville. I don't know what it is up there. But I'm back. Yes, I do apologize for being like, I'll try to be on a more normal schedule next week. I'm um, again Monday night. I'll do Monday Night Raw. Ooh, that's right. Tuesday SmackDown. Probably Thursday will be the Royal Rumble predictions. And then the 27th. Should be able to live stream most of the Rumble. I honestly don't know if I'm working or closing that day. Um, there will be some changes again to the show coming up. Um, I've done nothing but sleep, drink fluids, work for a few days. Yeah, I tried to do some stuff Monday and Tuesday. Not happening. So, but now with all that said and done. And this is a double show, so there's going to be a little break from Yano in here eventually. But let's talk about some wrestling. It was actually really fun, with the exception of some backstage segments that just seemed really weird. Um, to open up Monday Night Raw, the limo pulls up. Of course, the only person in the limo is going to be Vince, Vincent K. McMahon. And from there, we have uh, Braun coming out. To give a promo, and he needs to work a little on his improv promo skills. He needs to watch some Macho Man videos. That's how you do real improv promos. Baron Corman comes out. Um, again, he gets he has the um, get these hands, and you got fire chant. Braun, of course, chases Baron around, and wouldn't you know it? There's a Sing brother there. There's ever a Sing brother. Sing and a table. That Sing brother is going through that table. And then of course Elias is sitting over here in some corner playing a song about. He went that way into the limo, and I can't play guitar except for I think one song, so I won't even try. That's for others to try. And of course, when there's a limo. And there's Braun Strowman involved. Gonna get some destruction. But this time it cost them. This time there were actual consequences. Wait, this is pro wrestling. There's supposed to be no consequences. But there were consequences. He lost his Royal Rumble spot against Brock Lesnar. Hey, don't rip the door off the boss's limo. Don't break the glass off the boss's window. But once you do that, and once you realize all hope is lost, you might as well turn over the boss's limo. That was a fun segment. Again, I only rate the wrestling. 
I'm a little bit lenient when it comes to wrestlers and their creative stuff. So, but yeah, it was fun though. The first match of the night, we have Ronda Rousey and Sasha Banks versus Nia Jax and Tamina. Tamina still looks like a... Um, Banks, I don't know what it is, but she hasn't been new lately. Uh, it's been really... You know, I mean, it looks like she almost gave herself two concussions and almost tried to, like, break her larynx when I saw her at Orlando. Some of those spots were ooh, bad. I'll tell you what, those Simones, they have one big headbutt, though. Um, to finish things up, again, you have a classic heel miscue. Uh, Nia Jax throws Sasha Banks into their corner. Oh, no, Tamina throws Sasha Banks into their corner. Tries to spear in the corner. Sasha moves away. Tamina spears Nia Jax off the apron. Um, eventually, Sasha Banks locks on the bank statement. There wasn't a lot of Ronda, Ronda Rousey in this match. I guess they're saving her probably for the Go Home Show. And the Royal Rumble. I do apologize if I cough and weird stuff comes out of my nose. Again, I'm still in the healing up process. I'm about 90% there. I'm at that stage of recovery where I sound worse than I feel. It was heaven knows Sunday after covering for for stupid assistant manager and working all day. Didn't hear me say that though. I like my jobs. Monday I felt like caca, even though I did get my grocery shopping done. And Tuesday I still have to get my shoes up, even my even my good work shoes. Then there was a really so that was a cheeseburger match. It was okay. Nothing really spectacular. Really hard to screw up. Then the opening match was pretty good. And there was a weird promo between Sasha and Ronda Rousey because they're going to have a title shot. They're going to have the title match soon. And it was just weird. Evil Sasha is pretty good, though. Again, if you saw Sasha Banks in NXT, she can really heal it up. Um, Ronda Rousey with scripted lines. Yeah, the jury's still out about her promo ability. Good wrestler. When she doesn't have to say a lot, she's a lot better. But, again, I cannot say a lot, and I'd be pretty good, I think. So so we'll see. Then, of course, there was a cheap pop because they were in Memphis, Tennessee, the home of the one and only Jerry the King Lawler. So he showed up in Vince's office. And there were a whole bunch of wrestlers kind of wanting to get in line. Um, again, it's kind of a weird show because the call-ups just, like, showed up. We'll get to that later, too. Some of those call-ups are pretty creepy. And then we have the Lucha House Party. They're still fun. Versus a revival. And they're still doing the hashtag FTR. <coughs> the revival. Um, the revival. Be careful, WWE. They might be hit, headed to all ex all the wrestling. I thought it was all extreme wrestling for a moment. I had a flashback to ECW. I'm sorry, folks. In the cold medicine, and then I have to. I'm trying to wake up a little bit, so so I have some Mountain Lightning, which is loaded with caffeine, and it's a poor man's, it's a hobo's version of Mountain Dew. Actually, I think that would be Ego. Moon some moon juice or something. It's been a while since I find that. Again. It was Lucha House Party versus Rival. I do apologize for not having as much energy. It's kind of still sat a little bit. This was good because this was a classic two on two match. Listen, the Lucha House Party, they can still bust out those Lucha moves. That's some good stuff. The Revival is a classic tag team though. In the mold of the Minnesota Wrecking Crew, they're that good. Again, there's this was a this was a good match. I'll tell you what, I was so impressed because again, once you do have that clash in styles, it just makes it more exciting. And this time, the revival did not skip 
gets <coughs> chopped over. Because when, um, I want to say it was Grand Metal League had his foot on the rope, the other revivalist said, you know, I'm going to knock his foot off the rope. The ref won't see it. We'll get the win. Yes, the win by nefarious means. I like that. <coughs> you know, I do apologize. I'm still clearing stuff out. Again, I have my little friendo shirt on because everything else is in the wash being sterilized, I hope. Um, Vince comes out, cuts a promo. He's interrupted by John Cena. Well, John Cena sucks. Kind of getting old. Um, then, of course, Drew comes out. Baron Corbin comes out. Finn Balor. This time, Red Balor comes out. You know what happens when Red Balor comes up? Red Balor wins. A little foreshadowing there. So later on, so um, actually, I'm sorry, the previous match, that was a surf and turf match. I'm even forgetting my... That's not good. Maybe I could... Maybe I should look at my script two minutes before I went on here. But, again, this was, was really good. So now we have a Fable for White. Set up. Um, let's see here. So, again, we had an EC3 just kind of just there in the hallway. I know he's on Raw, only because, again, if you watch my video, he had one of the better dark matches. In the next match, we have the Riot Squad versus Bailey, Natalia, and Nikki Cross. Oh wait, why is she on Raw? She shouldn't be on Raw. She should be on. That would be fun. Nikki Cross, Charlotte, Asuka, Becky Lynch. Oh, that would be a blast. Really got a haircut, too. You, like, did the half buzz cut. I should point out the hobo look. And the other side, the other half, it's kind of long. And it's red colored. Looks good. It's different. I like it. Um, I, <laughs> I think the best line... I want to say Corey Graves says that people are like, well, well what's Nikki Cross going to do in this match? Corey just, like, I can imagine him, like, just looking over to Michael Cole and Renee Young saying, I don't think Nikki Cross knows what she's going to do, much less those other two. And it was a really, this was another fun match. I was surprised for a six woman tag match. I was very entertained. And Sarah Logan can speak. When did she learn? Non Kentuckyese. We're gonna see that coming up soon. But she like, whoa. Again, I'm not all thrilled with her multiple turns for multiple character changes. Keep one character. This is why I think she should have stayed in NXT a little bit longer, have her develop a character. If it didn't work in NXT, fine, then then you can scrap it. Don't Start all over again, kind of mid run and on the main roster. That's just bad. Um, Liv Morgan, still Liv Morgan. She's just heel Liv Morgan. So that's Morgan. Morgan. Liv Morgan. I'm calling her Morgana. And yeah, Nikki Cross is classic Nikki Cross stuff. She doesn't care. She doesn't care if she hurts herself in the process. She's just going to jump all over everyone. That one bump. Oh, wow. That Liv took. <clears throat> Liv hit a Northern Lights bridging suplex. I think it was on Natalia. Nikki Cross just jumped <laughs> right on to Liv Morgan. I give Liv Morgan a thumbs up for taking that bump. That just looks like it hurt. That means your back's like this, and then it quickly goes like that. Ooh. Again, it's a great visual. I'm sure they practice this stuff all the time, though. I mean, Nikki just goes absolutely bonk. She's just jumping off of ring aprons. 
this was a fun match. And eventually, um, Bailey did hit the Bailey to Belly after Nikki Cross really cleared the ring. I think um, Sarah, Lo Sarah Logan took the eighth of pin. But again, this was a really fun match. It's a really fun match. I'm entertained. Nikki Cross is running wild. That's a surf and turf match. Then the next match, and kind of another promo, Ginger enters Vince's office and says, hey, I should get a shot. I'm a big, strong guy. Finn's too small. And it's like, yeah, yeah. I like big men. Yeah. Ruthless aggression. Fight it all out. Yeah. Pummel the small guy. So we have Jinder Mahal visits Finn Balor for the match. <laughs> Singh pulls Finn off the ring. Again, this is... Singh's just there for distraction and to get beat up. Again, this is a really good... This is another good classic kind of telling of tales. Even though it's a little bit quick. You have Jinder Mahal again, the bigger, stronger, more dominant heel versus the faster, more agile face in Finn Balor. Again, this, this is the kind of classic David and Goliath, but this was this was really good because, again, you have the added element of the Sting brother on the outside being distracted. We all know how wrestlers are distracted. Um, I'll tell you what, Jinder Mahal did an amazing sell of that Pele kick or overhead kick. Um, Balor just launches himself onto the sings. I mean, this was a fun match. He did hit the coup. He did hit the coup to go at the end to finish off Jinder Mahal. He retains his spot for the Fatal Four Way. This was another fun match. This again is a surf and turf match. And I'm truly amazed at this point because I'm like, wow, this stuff's really good. And then this is where it kind of gets weird. And I say that only because I think WWE suffers from just odd booking decisions or wrong match placement. Because, and I kind of understand why they did it, but, but when you have a title belt on the line, that should, to me, that should really be the main event. I mean, they could have they could have flip flopped these matches, and I think the order would have been a little bit better. But the next match we have, oh, we also have some backstage people. Uh, oh, uh, 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 we see a shot of um, Lacey Evans chatting it up with Mickey James and Dana Brooke. Again, just like a kind of random thing. When Finn walked by, it's just like look at them. Hey, ladies, who are you? You're a new girl in town. We'll see. Again, I I want to see how Lacey Evans pans out on the main roster. I know in NXT they were just starting a character change where she's going to be part of the Forgotten Sons, kind of kind of the woman of the Forgotten Sons, the female elements of that group. That seems to be the thing. You have three guys. And a woman to kind of balance things out, I guess. But again, for this match, it was really fun. It was um, uh, Dean Ambrose versus Seth Rollins versus Bobby Lashley for the Intercontinental Championship. And again, I think this match should have been the main event. He could debate about that forever. Um, Dean, he's smart. He's just like, you know what? You two guys go fade it out. I'm just going to chill out, out outside the ring, pace around, pick my spots. Eventually, Dean and Lashley double-team Rollins. And then Seth and Dean double-team Lashley. Dean's smart. He said, I'm not going to get worked over. I'm going to work with someone and, and work one guy over a week in one person. And there were a whole bunch of fun false finishes, though. I mean, <laughs> somewhere in this, in this, Corey Graves, he's just having fun poking Renee because Renee seems to be genuinely upset whenever he brings up again Dean Ambrose and Ren and Renee Young they're married they're they're married they're husband and wife so Corey just loves to poke the angry Renee because <laughs> I think at one time she said hey Renee 
Dude, Dean Sugar Bear? I have no idea where it came from. That was just funny, though. Again, with this are a bunch of false finishes. I like Leo Rush's involvement, too. He was present. He helped his, his, his man out. But he was, it wasn't overbearing. It wasn't overly cartoonish. It was good. It was just amount. The fact that I think Vince is finally out of his ear makes Leo Rush a much more believable character. Let's get in that way. I mean, this was just a really fun, good match. Bobby Lashley won. A new Intercontinental Champion! Yes, 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 yes. And of course, with that, it was a surprise. It was really fun. This was a filet mignon match. What happened? Picture this: you're a stagehand. You're 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 someone's personal assistant. Say my personal assistant. He knows I'm sick. He knows I need some caffeine. He has a nice, cold, refreshing, caffeinated beverage for me. Knock, knock, knock. Mister Hobo Tom, are you in there? No answer. Hmm. Knock, knock, knock. Mr. Hobo Tom, are you there? No answer. I guess he's not there. But of course, the cannon doors open so he would see me. He'd say, ah, oh, Mr. Hobo, here is your beverage. I'd say, thank you very much, personal assistant. Go process the aluminum I found last night when I was sick. Go clean my t-shirt. Yes. Yes. Go clean my t-shirts. But no. This personal assistant obviously has the keys to the palace. After knocking on Alexa Bliss's door twice. Again, knock, knock, knock. Miss Bliss, I have your coffee. Knock, knock, knock. Miss Bliss, are you there? I have your coffee. Maybe he thought, this cup of coffee is getting cold. She just had to step out. I'll go leave it there for her. Oh, au contraire, mon frère. There is a semi-naked Alexa Bliss there. Whoa. Again, hearkening back to the more provocative days, yes, of the WWE. Like, oh, what are you doing here, you stupid personal assistant? Get out of my office! And then, of course, this led to a moment of bliss where they do unveil the, the woman tag team's belt with Paul Heyman. And those belts look pretty good. But then there's, yeah! Oh, yeah! Come on, Taki! You hear, start hearing strange noises, and you're like, I've heard those noises before. Oh, yeah! Yeah! That's Otis Dozovich! How does or did neither Paul Heyman nor Alexa Bliss realize there's a 300-pound man sneak on the set, sneaking on the set, and standing behind those women titles. You really can't miss Otis Dozovich, folks. So he's just there. Yeah! Oh, yeah! Oh, come on! Weird! Again, a lot of weird segments. The wrestling, the wrestling, excellent. Oh, the wrestling was phenomenal. The segments, though, what were they thinking? Again, so, and then of course, um, Tucker Knight comes in. It's like, oh, let me let me bring him back. And so, he's like, yeah, what are tag team belts? Yeah, it's like, come on, Otis, back to the gym. Stakes, wait, yeah, funny. 
And then, for the main event of the evening, we have Baron Corbin versus Finn Balor versus Drew McIntyre versus da, 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 John Cena sucks. John Cena. And this was actually, again, a really good match. Again, with this, it, there, there were stories involved. Again, Balor's the quicker, more... He's the more opportunistic when he already had a match. He's like, I have to, I have to win. If I'm going to win, I have to do this quickly because there's no way I'm going to outpower these three. And Corbin's bigger than I am. Drew's McIntyre's the, the manliest looking man giant I've ever seen in my life. And it's just John Cena. He John Cena law wins. So if I have to get this, I have to get this done quick. Uh, didn't work out that way. Then it was uh, Finn and Cena, Finn and Drew won up on the outside. So for a while it was Baron Corbin versus John Cena part two. We all know what happened in part one. John Cena was almost a heel because the crowd was chanting during that match. I think it was either, I think it was SummerSlam. It was, let's go Cena. Cena sucks. And he and you could hear him say, see, they're not even thinking about you. They're thinking about John Cena. And it only works if I go John Cena. Yeah, this was really fun. I mean, he hit the five moves of Doom, which was amazing. But that does not cut it though in a fatal four way match. Um, again, there's, as long, you know what, as long as there's no professor of thugonomics with John Cena, I'm kind of fine with him riding on, he doesn't need to break Ric Flair's record. That's, that's, that's something special. I'd liken that to the home run number of Babe Ruth before Mark McGuire, no, it wasn't, well, Mark McGuire broke it, and then, Barry Bronze took it, but for a long time, the, the home run number was kind of sacred. That Ric Flair 16-time champion, that's also kind of sacred, at least to me. Uh, again, depending who you ask, some some people I know I know do not like Ric Flair, but woo, he's the nature boy. He's high styling, woo, profiling, woo, up all night, woo. Limo riding. Woo! Woo! Personality. Um, then went um, Cena and Balor versus Corbin. And then Drew came in to break up the pin. And then they just started to do the classic uh, heels versus face, which was really good. And it worked, though, which is good. Um, Finn... And he kicked out of a... I don't know how he did that. He kicked out of a top rope AA. Um, Baron then came in with the chairs. John Cena ate the coup de gras, which is now, I guess, the finisher. And he ate the pin. He gave the rub to Finn Balor. Raised his hand in great in graciousness. Exited the ring. And that was Monday Night Raw. And this match, again, this was another flaming young match. The wrestling was so good. Everything else was so terrible, though. Okay, well, not I won't say terrible. Terrible is too strong of a word. Weird. That's a better word. And let's come back and talk about some SmackDown Live. So again, Raw was pretty fun. Again, the wrestling was great. Everything else, again, was kind of weird, though. Twilight Zone-ish. To open up SmackDown Live, Becky comes in. Full-size SUV. Obviously not Daniel Bryan approved. Um, the crowd just goes bonkers. Then you have by the greatest rub of all time. The New Day with her pancake mix. 
And Otis Dozovich making something? Had tuna juice, protein, pancake powder. I guess water was the liquid. Maybe milk. I forget. I don't know what was in it, though. You never know what's kind of in it because you never know if they're pouring it at the back. Again, from the ingredients, pretty funky, rocky like combination. Just like, yeah, shakes, pancakes, yeah. And Tucker Knight just like beside himself. <laughs> the New Day, <laughs> Kofi Kingston and Xavier Woods are like, ooh. Biggie's like, oh, I'm going to get me some of that. That looks good. Rubbing his belly, saying, that looks good. Pancakes, baby. Those pancakes are good, baby. And then Becky Lynch just walks up, takes a swig of whatever it was. The whole crowd goes bonkers. Otis oh, so goes, yeah! And the New Days go, whoa! That was awesome, though. So it starts off with a promo in the ring of um, Becky faces off versus Asuka. The Iconics come down. And I, th I think somewhere in between, like, Lacey Evans is, like, watching the TV. Like, the traditional wrestling pose. Like, hmm. Interesting. It starts off Becky Lynch versus Peyton, Peyton Royce. Becky doesn't need no ring gear. She'll go out there wrestling the street clothes. This was a good match. Um, uh, it, was, it was it was fun, and it tells a story of whatever you can do, I can do better. Um, Becky again got got the upper hand on Peyton Royce. Peyton Royce doesn't realize she was going to have a match. Becky challenged her, and Peyton said, "Okay, I'll, I'll take you on. Oh, I'll take you on, Sheila. Cool, crikey, I'm in for a fight." Um, Peyton again did did the better. Becky for a little bit. That was a little back and forth. Um, eventually, Becky goes, which was a really cool transition. Um, it was a fisherman suplex into the disarmor. Peyton Royce taps. Fairly quick, but fun match. A quick fun match. That's always going to be a cheeseburger match. Then Oscar's like, eh, eh. Like the iconic starts to go, you're not done yet. Becky Lynch fought you. And then she started to speak Japanese. Asuka's the best when she speaks in angry Japanese. And she could probably be saying the sweetest thing. Can she sing it loud? Angrily? And in a foreign accent? It sounds that much better. You have no idea what she's saying. She's saying, I, I picked up your bag by accident. I'm, I want to return it to you. It could be the nicest, most humane thing to say. But the way she says it, it's like, please don't hurt me. So not only, <laughs> not only is there an impromptu match, Oscar says, you can do that. Becky Lynch, I can do one better. <laughs> she just grabs <laughs> Poor Billy Kay. Billy Kay starting off her WWE career as a jobber to Nia Jax. It's not seen an easy go of it. Peyton Royce and Billy Kay, the I Iconics, need to hold those tag team belts just to say, Billy Kay, thank you for all the abuse you've taken. And for the most part, this is a squash. Asuka's in ring gear. Billy Kay's in semi-ring gear. Asuka just beats her up. Put her in the Asuka lock. A refer referee's there. She taps out of the Asuka lock. Again, this is a story. You know, Becky Lynch, anything you can do, I can do better. Because it took her a much shorter time to dispatch her Billy Kay. But again, it was fun. Again, it told a story in the ring. It's like, again, a very, you don't have to have complex stories. Anything you can do, I can do better. You beat up Peyton Royce, that took you too long. Watch me squash Billy Kay. Again, this was a f another fun cheeseburger match. So in combination, it's really good. And then AJ Styles comes out. 
It's like, I'm going, going to go in the crowd and pull the anti-Daniel Bright. You want a hot dog? Here's a hot dog for you. You want a t-shirt? He just goes to the merch table, taking AJ Styles shirts, and just starts chucking them into the crowd. Awesome. We love AJ. And of course, Daniel Bryan's a very angry person. He doesn't like consumerism. But AJ Styles gets the bell of Daniel Bryan in the melee and puts him through the merch table. That's a good comeback from last week. We'll see what happens now. Because again, I think my prediction... The Royal Rumble... I think Kenny Omega really did sign with All Elite Wrestling. So I had Kenny Omega entering the Rumble. Facing Brock Lesnar. Because Brock retains. Kenny faces Brock. Kenny's Universal Champion. Daniel Bryan. Sometime between now and Survivor Series wins the WWE belt back. Survivor Series, Kenny Omega, the Universal Champion versus AJ Styles, the WWE Champion. That's money. Bullet Club money. Bay Bay. Um, then there was an Uso short, and again, this is involving Mandy Rose, because Mandy Rose gave him, like, something. He's he Who's going to be on Raw again because I saw him wrestle on Raw for main event. It was still Raw. It's just they're posing in the mirror as Samoa Joe just walks by and Samoa Joe just stares at him. It's like, what the heck are you doing? Samoa Joe just looks annoyed. I think that's a pleasant S Samoa Joe look. Cause if he just looks annoyed, that's a happy Samoa Joe. Then you have Samoa Joe versus Mustafa Ali. I don't think this match started. This was fun because this proves Samoa Joe can just beat the snot out of anyone. Just tosses Mustafa Ali around. Does whatever he wants to to Mustafa Ali. I mean, it's like Joe's trying to kill poor Mustafa Ali. Ali can... He's good at that. And this was fun. I don't even think it's the match started. Joe... I'll, I'll, Joe was in the ring. Ali comes down. Joe confronts Ali outside the ring. Beats him up outside the ring. Throws him in the ring. Beats him up inside the ring. Throws him back out. Beats him up some more. And just walks out. Good stuff. I'll call it a wrestling match. Everyone knows Samoa Joe won. Because he was the one who walked away from the fight. This is another cheeseburger match. And again, the only reason it's just a cheeseburger, I don't think the match ever started. Then you have uh, Mandy Rose and Sonya Deville in the back talking about stuff. Deville's like questioning Mandy Rose's... Oh, what's that word I'm looking for? Her motivation. That's right. It's like, why are you doing this? I just want to show Naomi that she's not as good as me. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> and then, again, this is where the WWE kind of suffers because they had this match on. Not as the main event, but you see Rey Mysterio walking, walking in the back. <laughs> and Nikki Cross is literally in a cage. She's just, she's just like, let me play! What's, what's that phrase? Oh, Nikki just scared the heck out of her. Because she just, you just hear this, like, you're just, like, walking down, it's like, okay, I have a match, I have, I have to, I have to get focused, I have to get loose. Ah! Ah! Give her shots! It's like, let Nikki play! Just scared the thing out of her. Oh, yeah, that's right, let Nikki play. Nikki wants to play! That's cool stuff. Oh, this was amazing. I think the only thing, they just kind of shortened the names. Because now that there's, instead of Andrade Cien Almas, it's called Andrade. 
That's not as cool as Andrade Cien Almas. Andrade. No. And it was Rey Mysterio Jr. O M G. They could wrestle every other week on SmackDown with different results, doing different things. And it would still be a true filet mignon match. Ray is so quick. Andre is a little too powerful for Ray. The thing is, Andre still has this. Andrade Cien Almas still has the speed factor. He's no slouch. He's he's not the big lumbering person like, like say Randy Orton's big and lumbering compared to Ray Mysterio Jr. Again, very relative. Andrade Cien Almas is a lot faster. Than Randy Orton. Ray could fly and hit that Lucha Destroyer again. And this time it was more like a Lucha Destroyer. The only difference between the Lucha Destroyer, I think, and the Canadian Destroyer is that the Lucha Destroyer is more like a jumping, flipping power bomb, whereas the Canadian Destroyer is a jumping, flipping pile driver. I think. That came up, I think, in Lucha Underground a few times. Doesn't matter. It still looks amazing because this time it seemed Andrade almost landed more on his back than his head, which is a true Canadian. Destroyer. Vince saw that Canadian destroyer and said, what? What? "No pile drivers anymore. No pile drivers. Banned. Banned for life." No, you have to have the pile driver. Number one favorite move of Robo Tom is the pile driver. Then the headbutt. Headbutt into the pile driver. I mean, there's so many variations of the pile driver. You could, I'm sure you could figure something out. And then there was like the double moonsault by Andrade Cien Almas, where he does the flip and then does the moonsault onto him because Ray tried to move out of the way. Ray can still fly. He just does like the, the, the jump from the top rope to the floor and lands on Almas. That was awesome. Andrade is so strong. Um, I know early on in the match, Ray was trying to go for a hurricane over the top rope, flung Andrade over. Andrade held onto his legs and delivered a reverse it and gave him a powerbomb. That was awesome. Between that, the Lucha Destroyer, <laughs> the draping DDT, the draping hammerlock DDT. Ooh, that was good. Again, with some Selena Vega interference. That's, that's what she's there to do, though, folks. That's her job. This, again, was a filet mignon match. How could you not, as any wrestling fan, underneath heaven and on God's green earth, not enjoy this match? This match was amazing. I give it a double filet mignon match. With a dessert of banana foster on the side. And a 14 year old, or however old that's, 100 year old, single malt scotch. Yes. Uh, then, again, it gets weird. Because Jimmy Uso, I think. I always forget which one's. Sorry, folks. They look the same. They, Jimmy and Jay. Yeah. <laughs> Whoever Naomi's husband is goes to the hotel room. And of course, there's Mandy Rose in a very skimpy black lingerie. Well, not, well actually, it wasn't that, wasn't that racy. It's kind of typical black lingerie. Nothing. Because as far as lingerie goes, nothing. Really salacious, I get. I can think of some creative terms. The only reason I can is because I think when I lived in an apartment complex, the person that had rented the apartment was a woman. Now I'm still getting her Victoria's Secrets catalog. So I know a whole bunch of terms I probably should not. But again, it was just kind of, I guess, standard lingerie. And of course, when. Mandy Rose got close to Uso. Call him Mr. Uso. 
a photographer ran in. Like, this is weird. Like, ha ha, I got you. Naomi's not good enough. However, the surprise is, Mr. Uso said, wait right there. I guess went to the room that adjoins the next room. Opens up the door. Out comes Naomi. Cat fight ensues. The only thing, I, the only, only problem I have with this, this goes on a real silly, slippery slope. It kind of turned me off wrestling for a while. One evening, get one brawn panties match over the course of a year. Okay, I can take every week. Uh, trust me, they look good in brawn. It gets old, though. It's like eating. No, well, Flaming Young can never get old. Crab cakes. Crab cakes can get old after a, a whole year of eating them, though. Again, it was okay. It's, not, it is, it's kind of getting near that slippery slope. The previous match, the Rey Mysterio versus Andrade match, should have been the main event. Instead, this was the main event. You have Miz giving. Oh, Shane McMahon a birthday party. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Wait a second. Uh-oh. Get over here. You'll get your nap, don't worry. Ready to sing happy birthday? Ready? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Birthday to you. Happy birthday, Shane McMahon. Happy birthday to you. You're my. Where is it? Number one. Why did you do that? Hmm. Hobo Kitty. So trim your nails. There you go. Uh-oh. Oh. Let me put your bed back. Hopefully you don't see my... There she goes. Get to wake up a little bit. Always good to have the cat on. Cat gets readings. Uh-oh. This froze my video. So let's unfree stuff. Yes. yes. The miracle of modern technology. So it was Shane McMahon's birthday. And of course there's a big birthday party. Um, this gets him a pair of Jordan 33s. I'm not into sneakers. I do have to get a pair of shoes tonight. To order those because my work shoes are... Blah. Wow, my cat's just mad at me. She's sitting outside the door. I'm done with you, you fat hobo. Bastard, wake me up from my nap. We'll give everyone the middle. Um, so feel free to correct me. Again, you can always leave a comment, share a comment, subscribe, and send an email at hoboandgirlfriend at gmail.com and say those weren't. Air Jordan 33s, those were Nike Air Jordan 30s. I, uh, my hobo. I get my shoes at Walmart. And I go to JCPenney for dress shoes. That's still a thing to do. You go to malls. Only hobos like me don't go to malls anymore. The old fashioned indoor mall. I still like that. I should really do that tonight. Too. I'll do that one. And this is processing. Or after the gym. I do need to get to the gym. I skipped a day because I was sick. And I had to open up this morning when I took my nap. Naps are important, folks. Always take your nap. And you could probably take a nap during this segment. It was good. I mean, it wasn't anything bad. Um, this, again, is saying how they're the best friends are going to be the best tag team because... Shane is obviously the best in the world. It was fun. Then, of course, Bar comes down. 
We have a match of The Miz versus Sheamus. This is a pretty good action. Um, Miz, again, very reluctant to get in. Seems like, if you're my friend, you'll fight him. Miz is like, yes, I will. Um, it was a good. Um, the Miz is a great talk. He's a great seller. Very good um, facial expressions, body control during a match. Sheamus is still good. He's still the overpowering brute. I still have no idea how he gets, how he has that hair to stand up like that. That's amazing. Even Twisted Pixie likes his hair. Um, Cesaro did try to interfere um, eventually because uh, there were cakes on tables. Cakes on tables. Ron wrestlers do not last very long, folks. Cesaro went through one table, fell through the cake. Going to happen. That distracted Sheamus. Miz rolled him up. Miz is now becoming the master of the roll-up pin. The surprise roll-up. Sheamus ate the pin via roll-up. Starts to beat on the Miz a little bit more. Eventually, McMahon comes in the ring. Um, beats up Sheamus. Although the one thing is, is that the Miz held the cake the wrong way. For Shane to do the coast-to-coast -coast onto the cake into Sheamus. Instead of having the icing facing, so let's see here. So let's say the icing is facing this way. So instead of having the icing facing this way, which was facing Shane McMahon's feet and shoes, it should have been the opposite, have the icing facing Jameis' face. And therefore, when he kicks it, it goes right into his face, which would have been funnier. But this was okay. Again, this overall, this match was a good cheeseburger match. And really, SmackDown felt like a better show than it actually was. And that's maybe because of the, all the silly segments. <laughs> My cat's so upset at me. That's okay. I'm off to the gym soon. She'll have the whole house back to herself. It's like, why'd you have to come home from, from work, you hobo? Go back out there and get me pretty chow. So that was SmackDown. Both of all, I'm SmackDown. Again, probably so for the rest of the month, again, I'm going to try to maintain a much better schedule. I'm getting, again, a little bit healthier. Again, when you just catch that cold, unless you get like that right away, you're going to be zonked for a while. So I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. And again, next week is going to be Monday Night Raw, Tuesday Night Smackdown, which might come on Wednesday. Thursday will definitely be my wrestling predictions. Sunday, I'll get some parts of the Royal Rumble. I don't know. I, I'll figure that. I have to figure out that card. Um, special times, I think in February. I want to say February. I figure it's 9th or 7th. I'm going to be going to... I'd like, I'd like to go to Sanford. Watch some NXT. Um, they are also coming back to town. I think the 23rd of February. The 14th. I, 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 I'll take a look at that email again. I see he's coming back to Daytona Beach. Um, hopefully we'll have Twisted Pixie here to give some other comments. And we'll see how that goes. Because she knows how to do things live. I can do things somewhat live. I have to figure out things like cell phones. Listen, I'm just happy I have a computer with a camera in it and my $5 lapel mic. That's all this hobo needs. And just a kitty cat who can get over things a lot quicker than they probably should. So again, I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see everyone later. And again, I do apologize for being sick. It happens this time of year. I'll see everyone later.